Welcome to the Tippa County Development Foundation Halftime Show, featuring the leaders of the North and South Tippa School Districts. Development Foundation Director Chris Llewellyn knows that moving forward together starts with our students and their school leaders. Find out how you can be a part of Tippa County moving forward together at tippacounty.org. Hey everybody, it's Melinda with another episode of the Tippa County Development Foundation Halftime Show where we're moving forward together. And today in Sun Bear Studio, I have with me the principal of Blue Mountain School, Mr. Lee Holt. Lee, thanks so much for coming over. Absolutely, so glad to be able to do that. Now Lee... You're the one and only principal that I never worked with, taught with, that I've interviewed so far. Everybody else I've known. So let's get to know you first. Tell me a little bit about your career, your teaching career. Okay, so originally I taught at New Albany schools, uh, at the middle school actually, for eight years. And I taught computer science. Uh, That is where I did my student teaching. Uh, That's also where I, I grew up and went to school. And then after that, um, I went to Hickory Flat Attendance Center for one year as the assistant principal. And then that next year, I was at Ripley Middle School for a year and then as the assistant principal. And then I moved to Blue Mountain School after that, that next year. So that was last year. I was the assistant principal at Blue Mountain. And then now I'm the principal this year. That's a pretty quick uh, series of events. Have you learned something from every little position along the way? Absolutely. The makeup of the buildings was quite different. Uh, like I said, you have Hickory Flat, who is a K-12 through attendance center, so it's very much like Blue Mountain in the K-12. through We have all grades there, and then, like I said, the middle school was quite different, just having 5th through 8th grade. So the dynamics was different, and like I said, being under different leadership, um, having different styles of leadership, just understanding and growing from each one of those, and like I said, learning a lot from each of those. Isn't it fantastic to be an assistant principal and get to watch the principal before you do it yourself? It is absolutely necessary to be able to do that. Like I said, you, you're able to kind of learn some things before you're able to make those mistakes if you were to make those mistakes by yourself if you didn't have that experience. So it's great to be able to watch and have great leaders in front of you to watch and to learn from and just so that you don't repeat mistakes that you possibly would have made without having that knowledge. Okay, so you grew up just down the road in New Albany and taught at New Albany, and then you've you've been assistant principal inside uh, this district and another one, and now you've got your very own school. What do you have to get used to the most when you change and go to a new school? Culture is definitely one thing that that is different. Each school has its own culture. You've been at elementary schools, you've been at K-12 schools, and so culture not only changes from school to school but grade level as well i'm sure i would imagine that you would have to sort of mold yourself into whatever the culture is that they have before you begin to make the culture the way you want it to be one thing that i was able to learn working at hickory flat because like i said it's a k-12 through school and so that gave me some experience going into Blue Mountain, which is also a K-12 through school. We talk about this all the time, Miss Liz and I, my assistant principal. We're dealing with kindergarten students who, who are some are still coming to school and not really sure that they want to be there yet and a and, and little scared and a little timid where you have all the way through 12th graders who are, they are ready to get out. They are ready to be done. They are ready to move on. And so that interesting dynamic between K through 12 is where I would say, like I said, those two are very unique, but it's also, like I said, one of those difficult balances between all the way through kindergarten where a five-year-old student all the way through 17, 18-year-olds, that's an interesting dynamic. And like I said, you kind of have to, you don't want to treat it as two different schools because it's one school and we want one, one culture, one environment, but the way that you handle discipline, for instance, is is drastically different between an elementary student and a high school student. And then you've got that different age between fifth through eighth grade that's kind of its own little dynamic there. And so within a K through 12 school, you have all of that. And so that's been one of the learning curves, but it's also interesting, like Blue Mountain is such a tight knit family And, and the teachers that are there, again, we have phenomenal teachers phenomenal groups of students and um, 
like I said, it is such a tight knit family. We we call it the Blue Mountain family when we talk about it because it truly is. We're so small, and we we understand that. But that, in our mind, is not a negative thing. That is a thing of well, I get to know every student, um, and I get to know about their background. I get to know their siblings. I get to know their parents, and I know. Um, our students by first and last name and getting to know their parents by first and last name. And when we do the different activities, we're able to kind of see those different connections all across the board where uh, at a larger school, you don't get that opportunity. So we look at that as a positive. So that's, that's one thing that is interesting about Blue Mountain is it's such a small community, but it's that family atmosphere. It's, it's like my extended family that we have there. I love Blue Mountain. I think you you guys have the greatest um, atmosphere of, and I guess it is family atmosphere. Everybody is so polite. And I mean everybody, like kids, teachers, everybody is so polite when you come in and you, you work, work with them down there. So they also have uh, a little bit of trauma in their background because they've had so many principals in such a short period of time. None of it could be helped, but it does cause scarring for all the kids. Are How are you guys addressing that? I think by one thing is just trying to be visible uh, with the students, and that we've made that a point of emphasis to be seen each and every single day in all different aspects of the day. Uh, we try to make it a point to go into the cafeteria when students are eating. We try to make sure that Miss Liz or I, as one of the one of the administrators, are greeting the students when they're coming into the building. So um, they're seeing one of us. So just being visible, um, taking time to to speak to the students, talk to them, um, be at events when we well, like I said when we can, and uh, just getting to know their families and just. Like I said, just spending time with them, I think, is the biggest thing. And just getting to know them because, again, there has been that. And uh, just letting them know that we're here for them. Um, we constantly speak about positive things that we've done. This year, at the beginning of the year, we recognized all of our perfect scores, invited parents in. That was our first assembly with uh, the whole population of students. And we recognized their perfect scores. And just showing them how proud we are of Blue Mountain and how, how much that they've accomplished. Because, like I said, we were a B this last school year, and uh, we're super proud of that. And, and, and we, we're, we're bold about it and just excited about the gains that we've made and just wanting to continue that progress. It is so hard to be a B as a K-12 school. I know that it's hard for people out in the world to understand, but if you can understand the most convoluted things that you have to do for a k-12 school and you can't concentrate on any one thing like a high school can concentrate on graduation rate you really can just dial in and work hard on that but a k-12 school has to be thinking about everything from top to bottom so it is it's exceptionally hard to be a b school when you're k-12 it is like i said we we talk about how with a, through a K through 12 school we have to grow students each year to show that progress and and that is a difficult thing especially when we have several of our classes like I said has has blown the top out and then trying to find that growth the next year it makes it even more difficult but um, like I said that that's something we have to stay on top of and we have to make sure that each and every single class is continuously growing so that it a, 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 a computes to that model. Um, in a K through 12 school, which, like I said, is is a is a complicated model to to make sure that we have our hands on. Tell me about the STEM lab. Uh, what do you guys call it? The, opportun the opportunities lab. So with that, we have lots of different. We have tons of Vex robotics kits, and we also have other computers. We have some gaming computers in there that we're wanting to get started with students doing that. And then we also have like some design software computers where we have a broadcast journalism class and they go in there and they edit film. That is Miss Sarah Taylor's class. And they've been producing the Cougar News Network and we've gotten to see several of those uh, that's pushed out through the school. And uh, that's, again, students doing interviews and stuff like that. But being able to go in there in the Opportunities Lab and edit that software. And then also our rotation classes in the elementary 
they go in there each and every single day. There's a rotation in there, and we have a teacher that goes in, and she teaches them about VEX robotics, and they actually get to build robots, and they get to program the robots, um, and they also get to design those robots as well. And then we also have on the iPads the programs that they get to use that will eventually, like I said, learn, they'll learn to control those. And so we have lots of different things going on in the Opportunities Lab that we're super proud of that we have and have access to. Uh, Elizabeth Elliott, who is your assistant principal, I believe that she said to me that your dual enrollment classes, that sometimes the kids are getting to go to the Blue Mountain Christian University campus to do that. Can you talk about that? So, yes, they have an oral communications class that they are able to go just due to our closeness uh, to the college. They're able to go and actually be in person and go and take those classes, which, like I said, it, it's also fitting for us. They get They get to do that, but it's also fitting for us in the accountability model that we get points for students taking those dual credit classes. So we're, we're proud of being able to do that and partner with Blue Mountain Christian University for that as well. It feels to me like over the last 20 years, education has come a long way in focusing on the careers that the students we have will be doing. And we've learned a lot and we're doing a better job at helping kids find the future that's right for them. But it is complicated. There's so many choices out there, and it's real complicated. Would you rather have just lived back in the day when it was just real simple, or do you like living in this complicated world? Well, there is there's certainly things about uh, years ago, uh, again, things being really simple. The positive side of this day and age is the fact that Students are, there are so many opportunities that students can pick and choose from. And, and at times that does get overwhelming for a student to be able to choose. And I would say in the last 10 years that this has changed a good bit, where students were, most students were directed to a four year university and that's where you were supposed to go and that's what you were supposed to do. But now there's there's so many opportunities that are beyond that, are beyond that, that that's not the only track now. And so that's a difficult thing to manage, but it's also a wonderful thing that students are not, they, if, if a student does not want to go to a four-year university and get a degree that they can't feel that's going to fit their need or their desire, then there's an avenue for them to be able to take and go to those community colleges or go to a vocational uh, program and receive training that they can specifically uh, be prepared for their particular job that they desire. But it does. It, it becomes there's lots of opportunities out there in this day and age with the technology the way that it is. I mean, there's tons of jobs now that are completely remote. And when we have COVID to look back at that, and that's one thing that's that's great about it. There's tons of opportunities now for students. Lee, Tippa County is so spread out. There's there's so much uh, acreage that covers Tippa County. There's probably a lot of people that have never walked onto the campus of Blue Mountain. Would you say to people that might want to come visit you and check you out? I could say as far as our campus, we have two of the finest custodians that there possibly is. That is Mr. Jackie McKenzie and Mr. Harvey Rutherford, and they can do anything. I think anybody that I'm speaking to would know Mr. Jackie McKenzie. Um, he's been there for quite some time, and Mr. Harvey Rutherford has come on in the last year. They absolutely take care of our campus like it is their their house their home because i think that's the way that they feel about it our two custodians wear a lots of hats and not only do they take care of the grounds and that's uh, flower beds that's grass cutting it's weed trimming but they also take care of the inside of the building and you couldn't you couldn't walk into a cleaner environment for our students and like i said our, i know our students are super thankful for that but they also do the small things the electricity and, and all those different things that they do i have to attribute our campus and the beautification of it is directly to them I think it's so funny that a principal's mind is going to go straight to a custodian because they are the linchpin that holds it all together. You don't have time, but you want your campus to be inviting. You want it to look good. You want people's snap judgment to be, oh, this is a nice place to be. And only the custodians can do that. They're the only ones who are able to make it look that way. And you're right. Yours are excellent, and your campus is beautiful. Yeah, so when you come on our campus, like I said, you're going to see tons of smiling faces because, again, we, we feel like we are a family. Like I said, it's it's not there's not going to be a more well taken care of campus uh, that you're gonna that you're gonna go on to, and we just take care of our own. And like I said, we're just super inviting, and 
uh, just a family atmosphere. And like I said, when you come to see us, it's it's a family atmosphere. And like I said, we're glad to have you and glad to see you. And I do recommend anybody that hadn't seen it, go down to Blue Mountain and check them out. That is such a nice school down there. Lee Holt, I'm glad you're at South Tippa. I'm glad you have chosen to join that team. And we're we're just glad to have you in town. Well, I am so glad to be here. Uh, again, super thankful for the opportunity. And uh, I have learned a lot of these last few years. And just we are looking and plugging forward to, to continue to grow and continue to improve. And I I believe we are doing that. We're taking the steps to do that. So I'm proud of that. Okay, everybody. This has been Lee Holt, principal of Blue Mountain School in the South Tippa School District. And that's it for this episode of the Tippa County Development Foundation Halftime Show, where we're moving forward together. I hope you enjoy the rest of the game. This halftime show has been brought to you by the Tippa County Development Foundation, moving Tippa County forward together. And now we take you back to the second half of tonight's game.